Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. I want to start out tonight uh, saluting Congressman Barney Frank. Uh, last Sunday on uh, the NBC show This Week with Christian Amin Poor, she had kind of a, a mini debate with uh, George Will, Congressman Ryan. She had uh, Barney Frank and the uh, ex budget director from uh, Clinton's Zeros. And they were talking about this and that about the government and what should happen about this and what should happen about that. And uh, George Will, uh, of course, he gave his spout about uh, how big government uh, threatens prosperity and uh, it really just doesn't work good in this country that uh, really the best thing to do is have the smaller government. And I agree with that. I think smaller government's the way to go. We have way too big a government now and it needs to be trimmed more than half in my opinion. But uh, We'll leave that up to the experts, but uh, one thing George talked about was big government, how they end people's lives and all that, and a few minutes after that, Barney Frank said, uh, well, well, George, why don't you join Ron Paul and I on our legalization of marijuana bill that ends the federal ban on cannabis? And, I mean, he hardly got the question out of his mouth, and George Will starts saying, oh, I, I want to know how you're going to control and regulate it. Well, George, that's what's been going on since the Controlled Substance Act passed in the early 1970s. That's what's been going on. The government has been controlling it. They have been regulating it, much to the chagrin of all the pot smokers out there. We don't want this kind of control. We don't deserve it. Marijuana is not dangerous. Cannabis is one of the safest things you can put into your body. And we just don't need this kind of control. And it really is strange that somebody that of your caliber and so-called intelligence that you would uh, not be so current on the events going on with the cannabis movement and all of that in this country. But Bar Congressman Fink, I salute you, and I salute Ron Paul, and I salute that bill. And I hope all of you all out there will uh, give your support to that because it ends the federal ban on cannabis. And this is one of the things that has to happen before we can really get the hemp industry going and uh, let alone let, allow people to freely use cannabis, which is their constitutional right. It's not so uh, unheard of, though, that the government wants to keep doing this control and, and try to regulate our lives and all that, because they've been doing it for a long, long time. And uh, the U United Nations Office of Drug Control Policy, now, they, this we're a member of this uh, particular group. It's, uh, it started with the Singles Narcotics Act in 1961, around a, close to 100 countries around the world got together and they passed this Singles Narcotics Treaty. And the UN office, uh, they're, they're the ones that regulate the uh, drug control policy around the country. And in 2010, the United Nations Office of Drug Control Policy sat down and said that we are no longer going to refer to cannabis or any the cannabis resin, which is hashish, we're not going to refer to them by marijuana, dope, drugs, narcotics, anything like that ever again. If When we refer to them in legal terms and in, when we're talking about policy and whatnot, we're going to refer to them as cannabis for the flower tops and cannabis resin for the hashish. Now, since the United States, along with some of our enemies in the uh, Middle East, are also members of this uh, United Nations Office Drug Control, but uh, of course the United States has a big membership there and all, because that keeps the drug enforcement agency going. But uh, what we, we got, this is just the beginnings right here of where the United States government doesn't listen to policy set down by this office in 2010. Now, when you watch the shows on TV like Border Wars and the different Homeland Security videos and all, and they're talking about the interdiction of the, the narcotics on the border and all, they're referring to the marijuana. And they shouldn't even be calling it marijuana because it's cannabis. And that's, that's where our government has been so awry. They do not follow the policy any time that it works in their favor. Oh, he was a drug dealer. Kid got busted for selling pot. You know, they don't call it pot. Kid got busted for selling cannabis. I mean, it's, it's just so many different ways. As long as it works to their advantage and all, they're going to use a descriptive that makes it sound the worst. If it's not narcotics, it's drugs. If he's not a drug dealer, he's a drug addict. And they're talking about cannabis for the most part. And if you watch those shows, most of the arrests that are being made by the Homeland Security, even though they do occasionally find cocaine and they do occasionally find heroin, which, you know, big deal. They shouldn't even be regulating them. That's a person's choice if they want to even use those, even though I wouldn't recommend that. But if you chose to, that's your God-given right. Nobody else should be able to tell you what to put in your body. And we certainly shouldn't have a government that's so-called 
and has a so-called allegiance to this UN United Nations drug control policy group and then not follow the protocol that they set out. And I think this is wrong. And it just, uh, it just goes to strengthen their case. I mean, even when you, you hear about these uh, different law enforcement that are talking about it, they're always referring to, you know, he's, he's in possession of narcotics. I mean, you'd think, my God, they must have found a big bag of heroin or something or a bunch of uh, Vicodin or some type of prescription drugs and all. No, it's cannabis, and that's the narcotics they're referring to. But this is how our government works. When it works in their favor, they use the most descriptive, worst slang possible when they're referring to cannabis, and yet they follow nothing about the drug control policy that was set out in 2010 by the United Nations Office of Drug Control Policy. So I think this is wrong, and we really need to have this corrected. Uh, it, any time that they can make us look bad, the pot smokers or the cannabis users, they're going to do it, and this is why, because they don't follow the protocol. So I urge all of you, anytime you hear uh, law enforcement referring to cannabis as narcotics or drugs or anything like that, be sure you correct them and remind them that the United, Na the United States is bound by this policy that the United Nations dishes out. We're a member of that. And if we don't decide that we're not going to follow protocol and follow policy, then why should we have to follow policy that the United States government puts out? And the whole thing is stupid. We should be, able to be allowed to smoke cannabis just like we're walking down the street. There's no, there's no law out there that should be in, on the books that prevents a person from putting an herb into their body. And the very fact that we are holding up the hemp industry and crying about jobs and we can't even get a Congress up there to even pass anything that's of, you know, like this tax cut thing. They're, they're just fighting like crazy over it and all. If we get the hemp industry going and get people back to work in this country and all, believe me, if you wanted to let this tax cut slide, I'm sure there'd be a lot more people be willing to let that go and not even put up with all the bickering that's going on there in, in the Congress and all that. But we are not going to do this and we're going to remain stagnant if we don't legalize cannabis and we don't get the hemp industry going. And the sales and the money and all that's not going to come from medical marijuana. It's not going to come from cannabis use and all that because Everybody in the country could be smoking every waking moment of, the, of their entire lives and we could grow all of that amount that they would smoke in a given year on a very small amount of land. So it's not about the cannabis smoke or anything like that. We're holding up a trillion and a half dollar hemp industry by all of this stupidity. And I urge all of you, get behind your congressman. Get behind Congressman Frank and Ron Paul. At least one thing about it, this is a bipartisan effort. They reached across the lines. Barney Frank's a Democrat, Ron Paul's a Texas Republican. At least those two did meet eye to eye. And they're always talking about bipartisan work there in the Congress and all that, yet you never see it and all. This is a true bill that, that involves bipartisanship. And it's also one that gets the federal government out of our private affairs. And I do want to wish all of you a merry, merry Christmas and happy holidays. And be safe this new year. And don't do anything stupid that might get you arrested because the fuzz is out there looking for you. Ha ha. Stay away from them. Step away from the camera. This is the DEA.